everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here with episode 5 of our series, The Acts of the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Ghost is still moving. He is alive and well. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I believe we're in a season where we need to expect God to move and demonstrate with miracles, unusual, notable miracles, today more than ever before. And today on episode 5, I want to talk to you about Pentecost fire. Because I believe God is releasing Pentecost fire. It's time for Pentecostals or Pentecostalism to return again. You see that term Pentecost or Pentecostal actually came from the Azusa Street Revival. That was the beginning of Pentecostalism with the Bonnie Bray House, with William J. Seymour, who believed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And that's where, in a sense, the doctrinal dispensation or the denomination called Pentecostals came from. In fact, Pentecostals are the largest denomination, official denomination, in all of Christianity. Uh, very uh, dominant in uh, different countries in Asia and Africa and South America. And it might be because how different nations, ethnies are cultured and are likened to spiritual things. However, Pentecostalism is the largest denomination today. Uh, if we count the Catholics, of course, the Catholics are the largest. Uh, but in evangelical Christian faith, Pentecostals are the largest, which is very encouraging. Uh, but Pentecostalism comes from that season or the time of the Azusa Street Revival, which came forth with a one-eyed black man named William J. Seymour, came all the way from Topeka, Kansas, came all the way uh, from Texas, came all the way into Pasadena and Los Angeles area. And he believed in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And of course, that was what sparked the Azusa Street Revival and whole Pentecost the movement, okay? But today I want to talk about Pentecost fire because that word Pentecost in, in the Greek word of Pentecost means 50, okay? So penta or means pentagram or we see pentagon, which is a governmental building in the United States, the pentagon, right? So penta means five points. Pent means five, right? Or penta. So there's five points, so the Pentagon has five points. So Pentecost means a festival of five or 50, okay? Because Pentecost is actually the same festival or God's appointed time as the Hebrew festival called Shavuot, which is also known as the Feast of Weeks. Why is it called Pentecost? Because Shavuot is known for seven weeks of seven days, so 49 days plus a Sabbath, which is 50 days. So the Feast of Weeks is one of God's seven appointed times and seasons, according to the Bible, one of God's seven biblical feasts or times that God moves on the earth, which is called the Feast of Weeks, 50 days. 50 also stands for Jubilee. 50 stands for a jubilee, and of course the jubilee anointing stands for cancellation of debts, the returning of lands, the returning of property, returning of slaves, anything that you own, possessions, assets, valuables. It stood for a time of rest and returning back to what God originally intended. It stands for Shabbat. It stands for celebration and victory, and that's what jubilee is. So God is releasing a jubilee anointing, a jubilee spirit of victory, celebration, and harvest. Because Shavuot is actually a season of harvest. Did you know that it was in Shavuot that Moses, Moshe, received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai? It was during this Pentecost season. That's why when Moses received the tabernacle, excuse me, the tablets, when Moses received the tablets, the Ten Commandments, there were 3,000 people that were struck dead because they came before God unjustly. Years later, same time, Shavuot, or otherwise known as Pentecost, Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Harvest, there were 3,000 people that came into God's kingdom. Right there when Apostle Peter, when Peter stood up and boldly began to preach and proclaim the gospel. 
So Shavuot is a jubilee anointing, 50 days, but it's also about harvest. It's the first fruits of the wheat barley harvest. And why is this important? Because wheat barley stands for wealth. It stands for harvest, of course, but it stands for golden glory wealth. Wheat barley also stands for the bread, the manna. It stands for Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread or the house of God's bread. And Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the matzo. Jesus is the untainted, unscathed bread without any blemishes, without any leaven, without any mixture, any sin, any compromise. Jesus is the bread of life. So this is a season of God's word manifesting. So that's what Pentecost is all about. And I'm talking to you about Pentecost fire because the Bible here says, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost arrived, they're all together in one place, in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were eating. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled, some say all filled, with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as a spirit gave them other and some would say hallelujah some people believe that speaking in tongues is the main sign that you're born again or is the main sign of being filled with the holy ghost you're not filled with the holy ghost if you don't speak in other tongues that's what some pentecostals believe some denominations people believe that Unless you speak in tongues, you're not filled with the Spirit. You actually do not have the Holy Ghost. But if you're actually born again, truly born again, then you will have the evidence of speaking in tongues. I'm talking to you about Pentecost fire. Because there is such a thing as strange fire. And we see that in the Old Testament. We see that when they took the priestly elements... And they stepped out of God's territory, out of bounds. And there was something called strange fire. And many people today think that Pentecostalism or the charismania is strange fire. And let me tell you, there's some things that is actually Pentecostal fire, which is wildfire, which is the fire of the Holy Ghost. So who are you to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? In fact, Jesus says that is the unforgivable sin. If you blaspheme the work of the Holy Ghost. And we have other cessationists, reformed people. We have people mocking the church saying that this is strange fire. I'm sorry, how is this strange fire? This is actually the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is the work of God. This is Pentecostal fire. It looks like something if you are on literal fire. It looks like something if you are on fire with the Holy Spirit. Yes, there's a spirit of holiness. There's a holiness living. You're, you fear God. You fear God's word. You love God's word. You love to seek the faith of God. You love the things of God. You love to pray but also you work in miracles you pray in tongues you cast out devils but many people believe that this has ceased that this is no longer for today tongue talking is not for today devil cast out is not for today walking in miracles why would God heal when God has doctors and scientists and hospitals because Jesus said greater things you will do in my name can I get hallelujah you see in Leviticus chapter 10 Verse 1 to 3, it says, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died. This is called strange fire. What does that mean? It means that things that are done that are strange or unacceptable before God. Let me tell you, there is a lot of strange fire. But most of what people call strange fire is just Pentecost fire or is just immaturity. You see, when you have Pentecost fire, there will be unusual manifestations. There will be uncontrollable movements in people's bodies. There will be encounters. There will be visions. There will be prophecies. There will be ecstatic prophecy like King Saul 
had an experience. There will be the power of God where everybody in the upper room during that Pentecost time, they were acting like they were drunk in the morning season. They were drunk with new wine and they were mocked and made fun of. They were babbling like Babylon's. They were babbling uncontrollably. You will be mocked. You will look like a fool. You will do strange things that will be looked down upon and they will be misunderstood. But that's Pentecost fire. And it brings edification. It brings glorification of Jesus. It brings salvation to the unbelievers. It brings salvation to others. Because Pentecost fire, though there's unusual manifestations and moving and shakings and actions, there's fruit that follows. Follow the fruit. But you see, strange fire is when you are doing things that does not bear fruit. You're doing things that's mixed with mixture with manipulation. You're saying, thus saith the Lord, but it's not the Lord. It is a false spirit. It is a spirit of divination. There's a difference between Pentecost fire and strange fire. And I believe today God wants to release Pentecost fire. God wants to release Shavuot, feast of harvest, jubilee, a harvest anointing. He wants to bring a golden glory of wheat and barley. He wants to bring shovel harvest into your life. It's time to gather. I prophesy there's a gathering anointing coming to you. You will gather from the ends of the earth. You will gather because that's what the fire of God will do. That's what Pentecost will do. The Bible says they were all gathered in one place. At one time, and suddenly, a wind from came, a wind from God from heaven came like a rushing wind, and they were all filled. Are you ready for everything in your life to be filled? And the Bible says they all began to speak in tongues. You're meant to be a sign and a wonder unto the Lord. You're meant to speak of the mysteries. Of God, you're meant to speak of the coming things, of the mysteries of the age. God is anointing you to be a sign and a wonder, to be a vessel of the Lord. Are you willing? Are you ready to receive that Pentecost Shavuot? Receive the new commandments, receive the new law, the law of love. Are you ready to receive on a mountaintop encounter? This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lemire, and I believe Pentecost fire is for now. It is now. Get ready for Pentecost Jubilee 50 days. 50 days of blessings. Jubilee fire to be released over you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. And let me know if this word blessed you today. I hope episode 5 of Pentecostal fire blessed you on this series called the Acts of the Holy Spirit.